Hi everybody, it's Jen with Cake Tastic Cakes and I'm going to show you how I made a soccer ball cake. A nice round soccer ball cake without using any molds. If you have a couple of Pyrex bowls the same size, you can make this cake and I'll show you how to do it. Now I'm going to show you how to make the cake first using a couple of bowls to make the soccer ball cake and then I'll show you the rest of the soccer ball cake. And this is all you have to do. If you have two glass bowls, I have two Pyrex mixing bowls here and they are the same size. You see they match up, same size, everything checks out. And that's all I'm going to need. Now in order to do anything, I'm going to have to prep them. So I'm taking some Crisco or any type of uh, vegetable shortening and I'm going to coat the bowl, give it a nice coating all around it. And it doesn't matter if the bowls are old or new, as long as they're glass and the same size. Pyrex is a great brand, so that's what I use. Uh, now that it's greased, I'm going to take some parchment paper, cut a little funky looking circle out of it, and stick it into the bottom of my bowl. I know that these bowls are not completely flat or completely round on the bottom, but that's okay. Now I'm going to take a little more Crisco, a little more vegetable shortening, and apply it to the top of my parchment paper because I really don't want this to stick. And I've never had it stick. Like, it, it works so well. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing with the second bowl. So here are two bowls that I already have prepped. Uh, they were a little bit of a different size when I realized, oh shoot, I didn't actually show anyone how to grease them up. Now when you add your batter to it, you're just going to fill it in about halfway. And as you can see, it says do not preheat your oven. Do not preheat your oven, people. If you're going to try this method, do not put these bowls into a hot oven. No, no, no. They will break. you got to put them in the oven cold and then turn your heat on so that as your oven heats up, it heats up the bowls gradually. All right, getting back to this now. I filled them about, you know, a little over halfway full. And if you, these are, I think, about six inch bowls, if I had to guess, and around the top. If you're using something bigger, here's a little trick. Take a piece of tin foil and I put it over my fingers and just kind of wrapped it around my fingers so it's hollow in the center. Add a little bit of Crisco to it on the outside so that you have basically kind of like a well, I guess you could say. And that you would push down into the center of your batter. This way it will cook a little bit more evenly because if your bowl gets too big, you will end up with a gooey center. So this would help avoid it. But as you can see, it floats a little bit. Um, if you do try this and it floats, you can do a little trick. Just throw a few coins into the middle of your tin foil, and who cares if they bake? <laughs> you know, it's not going to touch your food, and they can get warm. So yeah, it should be okay. Now, like I said, place in the cold oven, then set your temperature. When they come out, they're going to just plop right out. You might have to give them a little wiggle, wiggle like that. Boom! There it is, <laughs> nice and round. Grab the other one as well, and it's just like any other thing too. Once they come out of the oven, do let them sit and set for like five minutes or so. Well, you can see they are kind of round, but they've got that lumpy bit in the top right there. Not a problem, just trim it off. I'm using a bread knife right here just to flatten off the tops. It ain't perfect, but it does work. At this point too, you could also make uh, more cuts down if you want each of those cakes to have more layers to them to add more icing. This is just demonstration purposes, so I didn't bother wasting my icing. However, there we go. See, it's much more half hemispherical, I guess is the term. So yeah, any of the rough edges, just trim them off. Anything that isn't even, you know, it isn't perfect, don't worry, because you're going to add your icing. And this is where I said before that even though you could see it's a little flat on the top and the bottom, I kind of feel like the little flat on the bottom is not a big deal, because you do want it to sit on whatever it's sitting on. And on the top, it's not such a big deal either because we're going to ice it. So I'm just sticking some icing in between just to hold them together. Again, just for demonstration purposes. Going to line them up as best I can. And at this point too, if you see, you know, around the edges that where they're connecting, it's sticking a little too bit, you could trim it. You know, whatever. I'm using buttercream icing, use ganache, use whatever you want. And it is a nice little roly-poly kind of cake, so I had to keep my finger on the top there to hold it down. But again, like I said, this is where you're going to set it up and really give it any type of finishing touches to its shape that you feel it needs. Once you are happy with it, stick it in the fridge, let it chill just like you would any other cake. And then you're ready to go. You're ready to use it for whatever you want to use it for.
And now, since we're going to be using it for a soccer ball, I'm going to cut out my shapes now. I've got, oh, I've got two, four, six, seven of my pentagons there, the black pentagons. And I'm going to make even more of these hexagons here. Um, it depends on the size of the ball that you're making. I like how many you're going to need, but you're typically going to need, you know, about the same amount because it kind of gets tricky here. This is where it becomes a little more hard and you might have to do a little bit of research, but whatever diameter ball you're going to make, you have to have the right size hexagons and pentagons to go on your soccer ball because it's going to look weird if you don't have it proportioned pretty close. Like mine is not perfect, but it's close enough that I got away with it. It's also going to look best if your ball is as perfectly round as possible. This is where maybe it's worth it to go out and buy the mold. I didn't, and like I said, it came out really darn close. It's not perfect, though. To get an idea, um, when you place it, you're going to have, if you know if it's going to be, you know, proportionally look pretty good, it's going to have to look like the black center is showing nice and, nice and bright right there in the center, and you're going to be seeing um, on the perimeter of your ball when you're looking at that one centerpiece head on you're going to see the black the other black pentagons um you know around the perimeter it's so that way you don't see any more of that and that way your proportions are going to be pretty good this is like i said before you're going to have the front of your cake this is the front of my cake this is where it's going to look the best i'm not going to lie i i ended up um using a cake that i had made into something different so i re-iced it and my icing was not perfect so right here you can see in the back it becomes a little bit off that's where my shapes start to fall apart so you got to be careful make sure you have a front that you keep nice and clean watch your sizing watch your positioning make sure you have your your one pentagon and then your star your stars geez uh into kind of a, like a star flower shape and then your hexagons are surrounding each one and you will be pretty good uh, like i said in the back i had to stretch some of the pieces a little bit i had to fill in the piece a little bit but it's in the back and yeah so i took that green border off also that you saw there and i'm going to pipe in some grass just using a star tip because it looked better. I didn't like how the green looked before. And yeah, when you have it all said and done, it looks like a pretty darn good soccer ball. No one's going to be mad at you for it. So I hope you found this video a little bit helpful, hopefully. Uh, I hope you like and subscribe because it does help me out as well. I've got a lot of other videos out there, so be sure to take a look. And as always, thank you for watching Cake Tasta Cakes.